Installing NVMe is on this card is easy. It comes with, it, with the thermal pad. You remove the heat sink like I, I've already done here. I already have two PCIe NVMe is installed. I'm gonna install two more. These two, the 970 was the original that came with my Mac Pro. It has Mojave. The 970 Evo Plus has Windows. I'm gonna install two more now. So I'm gonna remove the plastic protecting the thermal pad both from the heatsink and from the card itself. This is the passive uh, version of the card. It has no fan and it's cooled by the airflow provided by the PCIe fan of the Mac Pro. In the Mac, we already got installed 64 gigs of ECC RAM running in triple channel. You could push the Mac to 128 and I've heard even maybe 160, but then you have dual channel mode and you miss performance. So the first uh, RAM slot of each CPU in my case is empty. Already installed in the chassis, we got a Vega 64 flashed by Mac bit cards, which means that with or without open core, you can get a boot screen. I'm using open core because this gives me H.264 acceleration in macOS for video editing and it's easier to boot Windows and install other OS without fearing of frying the configuration. And I did it myself. The Pixlas uh, PSU mode is done. So you see you got two 8-pin uh, connections going straight to the PSU from behind the CD drive. It was not very hard to do, just required a lot of patience and it's been working reliably for already two years. This is another excellent card. This is a Magellan video capture card. Um, I'm not sure if it is hardware accelerated for encoding, but it is for sure for capture. You have a HDMI import with a pass-through port, so you get a completely lossless original signal on a second display if you want. It synchronizes with all resolutions, as far as I know, to 4K 60, maybe even 8K 30, I'm not sure. And you can have multiple cards in the system by this, it's not kind of a, it's not a jumper, it's just a selector but you could have multiple versions of the card running and multiple cards together and the system could manage them. The driver is not great on the Mac, it's excellent on Windows, it should also work on the Linux. And um, well, it's not very useful for capturing your own screen because you have to loop it through and that would cause, well, you're gonna use CPU, right? You can use straight the, the, G, the internal GPU encoder, but if you're capturing another computer, this is, an excellent choice and it works also very well with a VGA to HDMI converter that I have. So this is the Thunderbolt card already installed. I don't know where my main display port to display port loop cables are, so I'm not gonna be testing USB-C in video, but you get here power delivery from the motherboard connected from the mini six pin to the six pins in the Thunderbolt card and that provides, I think, up to 100 watts, maybe maybe a bit less because of Mac Pro limitations, but you can charge your phone and uh, even your laptop. I've tested charging a MacBook Air from it and it works perfectly fine. Right. And then you have this grounded loop here uh, to make the card think that it's connected to the motherboard. Also been working well. And now I'm gonna just install the capture card and the NVMe card in the Mac Pro and we are gonna get to installing the operating systems that are missing and testing it. The Pixels mod connectors plugged to the Vega 64, the NVMe card, you can see the thermal pads on the side, you get the capture card down here First of all, let's start with our open core boot screen. You can boot Mojave, which I keep for 32-bit apps and Shake and other options, and also the best release of Final Cut Pro for a classic Mac Pro. You get Windows 10, fully operational with all drivers, including Thunderbolt. We get Ubuntu and we get Haiku OS. 
let's start our journey with Ubuntu. So I apologize for the display. Um, I replaced my 30 inch display with uh, OLED and macOS doesn't like it very much. To start, let's have a look on the terminal. And you can see that if we check the mask, Thunderbolt is detected and works fine. I have tested it with a docking station. I don't have it at the moment, but it's all good. We also get the Vega 64 properly detected. And let's see if we can find out some 3D demos to show the performance. You can see that's correctly using the hardware renderer and we are getting 830 FPS on this benchmark. If we look at CPU info, you can see that the two sockets, the two Xeons are detected and everything is working correctly. A quick visit to top gives us our 64 gigs of RAM. Now let's go to Haiku OS. can quickly go to pulse and you can see that we get 24 threads on the two Xeons X5675 and Haiku has a lot of useful applications and they all work perfectly well so let's for example can open Blender we can also open let's say GIMP We can go to let's say activity monitor. We can see that we are using two gigs of memory and CPU usage is always very low in Haiku is a very optimized system for multi-threading. We can open our classic GL teapot. Runs perfectly fine at 300 and how many FPS here? I believe Haiku OS is in the perfect shape to be a daily driver OS. I don't expect Thunderbolt to work, but you can see here that, oh, the Thunderbolt bridge. I'm not sure if you connect a device here, it's gonna work, and I'm probably not gonna have the chance to test it with an external PCIe enclosure, for example. CD drive detected, our NVMEs are here. If we open the disk partitioner, you can see it's detecting all my partitions here, all fine. And Haiku is just impressive on how, how everything is instant, is the most responsive operating system I've ever used. It runs perfectly well on, on my Mac Pro. The installation is taking 67 gigs as of now with the few applications I have installed. Krita is here, Krita works okay. Let's see. Create a new image. What else do we have here? We get VLC also works fine I have tested it I can see it's not really using hardware acceleration drawing on the cursor is quite laggy 
but otherwise do we have preferences to check this display it says using OpenGL renderer but I'm not sure it actually has drivers for hardware acceleration I cannot tell I don't know how to verify it uh, in any case it's a super system I really like the uh, interface and I really like how it respects the screen real state it's perfectly usable in this very low resolution display now let's leave Haiku and go to Windows a quick visit to the device manager shows us that all our devices are fine including the hardware capture card with HDMI input we get the Vega 64 properly detected FireWire also works uh, if we go to the storage controller we can see the four NVMEs are detected all works perfectly fine if we open task manager then you see here we get the two sockets detected correctly 12 total cores 64 threads I mean 24 threads 8 gigs on the Vega 64 all detected ok an interesting thing here Thunderbolt works I have tested it with the docking station in Windows as well it works fine no attached devices at the moment and to keep my sister my sister system healthier for long I use max fan control to keep the north bridge diode under 70 degrees Apple lets it run quite hot so the first fan is set to run a bit faster to keep the temperatures low in Windows this is my setup for gaming also pushing more air through the PCI slot and if I use my standard profile I let the PCI fan slow down and keep the north bridge running fast another interesting thing to show here is that if you go to settings in OBS we get hardware accelerated encoding using the Vega 64 so if I'm running an encoding the CPU is almost idle and if I go to my capture card it's fully detected and working fine if I go to properties this card is excellent it can go all the way to 496 by 2880 at 60 fps with HDR it runs very hot but it has an active cooler and this can capture absolutely anything uh, between the base VGA all the way up to 4k 60 it's a great card it's not cheap but it's great now let's go to macOS actually before we go to macOS quick look on GPU-Z and CPU-Z on CPU-Z we get that this is the 95 watt Xeon which I prefer the other option is the 346 gigahertz Xeon but that runs at a 130 watts TDP if I'm not mistaken so the computer is louder it's more temperature on the north bridge it, it gets hotter and I've heard the longevity is a bit less and this is excellent as it is and I will show you later the gaming performance of this machine memory we are running on triple channel 64 gigs of DDR3 and this is the optimal setup for the best performance in terms of memory throughput and here we get our Vega 64 very high bandwidth 8 gigs runs perfectly fine on Windows the way it's set without all that stupid AMD software I don't like those vendor drivers for gamers they are awful so I just keep the basic driver installed and yeah it's it's just running super well super stable no issues with setup at all on the Mac again we get the two Xeons detected 64 gigs of RAM the Vega 64 and if we go to system report or oh, actually before memory setup optimal for this machine for best performance 
if you go to the report and go to graphics and displays we see here that we I'm running the Mac Vid Cards firmware so even if I remove uh, open core I get full boot screen all fine Thunderbolt also detected and working okay and the card also gives me USB 3.1 type C that works fine too our four NVMe devices are detected correctly and everything is just excellent, stable and solid. Another thing I want to show you is, you see, with the correct open core configuration installed, we get full hardware acceleration for encoding and decoding for H.264 and H.265. And that means that with the correct version of Final Cut Pro and as far as I know this is the uh, latest version that can run full acceleration on the GPUs meaning that I, I tried already 3.4 um, H.264 4K streams and the computer goes through the multicam with effects with no problems and again we have a max fan control to keep the diode of the north bridge under 70 degrees power consumption is around the 160 watts iso with the vega 64 140 watts with the rx 580 and i've seen it idling at 115 watts when i had the rx 560 installed 